finally a good month for my portfolio. Welcome to Millennials of Money. My name is Johnny and yes, finally I've had a good month with my portfolio. We'll get right into the numbers in just a minute, but let me talk to you first about some of the news that's been going on this month that contributes to the success of my portfolio in March. Now we're in some really interesting times at the moment. There seems to be a lot of optimism in the stock market, particularly in the US and in the UK, where the economic recovery is starting to pick up, where people are starting to get vaccinated, against the, the illness and the prospect of a return to normality looks to be possible at some point this year. And even though in the rest of Europe things are a bit of a mess when we look at things politically and economically, the stock markets are still trending upwards. Not to the same extent as the UK and the US of course, but yeah, there seems to be a lot of optimism in the markets right now. This begs the question as to whether the stock market is a bubble right now and could crash at some point this year as a lot of people have been talking about. So with these rumors, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos. I'm not gonna get into the details. I'm not gonna say, yes, there's gonna be a crash or no, there's not gonna be a crash because it's very difficult to predict these things. But there are indicators out there such as expected inflation in the future, such as very high levels of optimism in spite of difficult circumstances right now that suggests that a correction or a drop in the stock market this year is a possibility. So if there is a correction or a drop, then these gains may well be short lived. But hey, while we're up, while we're positive, we gotta celebrate the wins. I'm just joking, I'm not gonna drink this. <laughs> so let's head over to Trading212 right now and I'll show you just how well my portfolio has done this month. So we'll start with my ETFs pies. Oh my gosh, man. Remy, you wanna do that now? So we'll start with the ETF SPY. So we got 280 euros, 36 cents is the value of the pie on 270 euros invested. So that gives a return 10 euros and 31 cents, which is a 3.82% return, which is not bad. It's pretty good. I got my first dividends in this pie this month. So they were split between two ETFs. So my iShares Asia X Japan ETF and my core Eurostox 50 iShares ETF as well, both paid me dividends. Because I hold these ETFs outside of the pie as well, it just gives me the total dividend amount for each ETF. So I haven't been able to break this down, um, the corresponding amounts within the pie. So let's have a look at the top performing ETFs in here. You can see the US ones, particularly the S&P 500 has done really well. The S&P 500 actually hit over 4,000 um, today as well. So that's a new all time high for the index. Uh, you see as well, the Eurostox 50 ETF uh, is doing really well. That's been driven by the DAX index in Germany, which has performed really well. And then you can see, uh, so we got here the Far East excluding Japan and the Nikkei 225 uh, ETFs. Now the reason these ones aren't doing as well as some of the other ETFs is because a lot of investors in Asia have started to take advantage of these higher bond yields in the US. So equities are starting to uh, suffer as a result. So this comes back to what I was saying about a potential stock market correction. Is this something that we might see in Europe and in the US sometime soon? Who knows, I, I guess time will tell on this one. Also remember that from a geopolitical perspective, Asia is a very uh, sensitive region, uh, you know, ongoing tensions with China, Biden's new infrastructure plan. A lot of political events going on in that region can have an impact on the stock market as well. Then to finish off the look at the ETF, so you'll see there's one new ETF in there and that's the Van Eck Vectors Video Gaming and Esports ETF. So I really like this one. I invested in it actually a while back and decided to add it to the pie. The reason I like it is because the video game sector is in constant growth, constant evolution. It's done particularly well through the lockdowns as well, but you know, video games are gonna be around for a while and they're constantly changing and evolving as well. And with some really strong players in the video game sector, but me not being able to decide on individual companies or individual you know, developers, uh, I decided, let me just buy a lot of them in this, in this ETF, which represents them all. And hence the, the Vanek uh, ETF that we have in the portfolio there. 
So that's actually, I think, the first sector-specific ETF that I have within this pie as well. There may be others to come, but we now have one sector-specific ETF in the pie. Now let's go into the Euro stocks pie. Now this is the top performing pie of the month. So you can see the value is 224 euros and 28 cents on 201 euros and 48 cents invested. So that's a 12 euro 72 cents return, which is 6.23%. So that's really nice. I didn't get any dividends this month in this pie, but there are two companies that I have added to the pie. So if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll know I've talked about BA Systems and Unilever as good, strong UK dividend paying companies that I believe were on sale at the time. So if you wanna find out a bit more about the specifics of why I picked those two companies, I will leave the link to the video where I discuss them right here. I've also got a video where I analyze Unilever in depth if you wanna check that out as well. And so along with Unilever and BAE Systems, you can see in the pie that uh, Sage Group and National Flexpress are doing really nicely there, 10 and 20% gains respectively. National Express was actually Morningstar's pick for stock of the week a couple of weeks ago. And even though they posted a 104 million pound loss, which was to be expected, of course, given the circumstances, they're very bullish on what might happen with National Express. So if you think the UK has obviously put a ban on uh, non-essential trips abroad now and you've got the tourism minister um, advocating stay-at-home holidays so holidays within the UK so National Express with their intercity network they could benefit really well from that another noteworthy winner we have this month is Deutsche Telekom uh, so up 13% on them uh, the Deutsche Telekom stock uh, has shot up this month uh, following good results. So their net profit margin was up 7.5% versus the prior year. And thanks to their acquisition of Sprint in the US, they have surpassed 100 billion euros of turnover. So that acquisition has clearly worked out well for them. They're also really going aggressively with the rollout of their 5G network. They're hoping that by summer, 60% of Germans will have access to their 5G network. So they're clearly trying to establish themselves as a 5G leader in Germany. And the final winner we'll take a look at is AXA, so I'm up 13% on them. They didn't have that great results um, versus last year, but the stock has reacted really well to their Driving Progress 2023 strategy, where they announced some major changes to their senior leadership team. And these guys that are coming in on the senior leadership level uh, all have significant experience um, within the sector. So clearly they're serious about making some change, about achieving their goals, and the stock has re um, reacted positively as a result. And hanging back there in the red, we've got Red Electrica Corporacion. Um, so of course we saw last month, they have made significant investment in certain infrastructure projects in Spain. They also underperformed uh, versus their expectations. So the stock, I think it's bounced back from the position it was in last month. But you know, generally the sentiment around the IBEX 35, the Spanish index is not that great. And that index does tend to underperform compared to some of these other European indices as well. Then finally, let's have a look at the speculative investing pie. So you can see I am still down there. But if you remember last month, I was over 10% down on this. So I'm on my way back up, you know, still 7% down, uh, 50 euros invested, 46 euros and 45 cents is the current value. So I'm down 7.4%. And of course, you can only put this down to two stocks, DocuSign and Tesla. So I believe there was also a point this month when the Nasdaq 100 uh, tanked, uh, investors started to lose confidence in it. Uh, so that accounts for some of that drop. Uh, there's also been a lot of speculation, a lot of talk about Tesla as to whether Elon Musk's gone too far by buying Bitcoin, um, as to whether uh, Tesla is overvalued right now, as to whether it still has potential in the future. So there is potential for further dips, I guess. Nevertheless, my strategy will not change. I still believe in the future of both these companies. So I will continue to dollar cost average into them. I am not concerned at this point. So there you have it guys, the speculative investing pie, not quite on track for performance yet, but the ETF and Euro stocks are more than making up for it with a solid performance. 
I'd love to know how your portfolio performed during the month of March and I'd also be interested on your thoughts about the future of the stock market. Do you think there's going to be a correction, a dip, a drop, an all-out crash this year? Leave a comment down below and let me know. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.